Okay. The recording has started. Okay, guys, thank you once again for coming. Um, today we are going to, last week we, we finished dictionaries, right? That, that to me brings us to the end of us working with data, okay? And manipulate as an introduction to what you can do with data, how you manipulate data. Because so far, everything we have been doing has, has, has had to do with data, right? How to receive data, how to change the string, how to remove this from your data set, how to do this to your dictionaries, how to um, do additions. Like everything has to do with some sort of information, you receiving some sort of information and then doing something to that information, whether it's a string or whether it is a, an integer, okay? Yeah. Now we are going to we are going to work on something I'll call control, okay? Control, that's controlling the flow. Controlling the flow or logic of your code, right? In or in, so what, what I'm trying to say is in programming, okay your code needs to be able to kind of take certain roots or branches okay because your program will not be linear there's nothing you cannot write a linear program a program that has that can do only one thing you get me your program needs to be able to take different paths depending on what is happening okay your program needs to be able to um and be doing something and then if something happens it will change your program needs to be able to wait for something to happen and then change so there there you need to be able to control your program or you need to write programs that in turn control your programs or or, or allow your programs to flow in different ways or reason based on what what decision it needs to take and that's kind of what we are going to be looking at we are going to be looking at we're going to be looking at how to um, control the flow or logic of your code, okay? All right, so those of you who have used Scratch before, I'm sure you've seen in Scratch, there's something called controls, right? Con controls, those, those of you who have created games before, you also probably heard of something, maybe controllers. So there are different ways or there are different ways you would have, you might have heard of it before. Right, okay, so the first control that we are going to learn about is if statements, okay? So if statements. I hope I'm getting it right. Okay, now let me do it if else rather. Okay, so now the thing with if statements is that you have to remember your logic operators, okay? You remember that I said that everything that we are learning, they are just syntax and we'll begin to write like the real code, right? Most of the things that we are learning, we are just learning the language, right? We now have to learn to use the language, okay? How to put it together. So in this one, we need to go back to our operators lessons, right? Where we use logical operators, where we use something like a is it's um, ten is a is less than b, a is greater than b, a is less than or equal to b. You get me? A is less than and equal to b, like all those things that we did. And I think we used some comparison operators too, right? So comparison operators, and then um, 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 yeah, actually it's mainly comparison operators. That's what you're going to be using for if, right? Yeah. Comparison operators. Okay, um, you you also use assignment operators here, but that's in a different um, context. Okay, so let's look at our first. Let's see how to write an if statement. So let's say um, a is equal to. Oh, sorry. Sorry, some schools are entering. Let's take a very simple example. A is equal to, let's say, 10. 
okay? And B is equal to 20, okay? Then we can write an if statement, okay? Here, we created the values for A and B, but we can still write an if statement saying if, right? Then into brackets, we create a condition. So we'll say if, let me, let me move the brackets first. So if A is the same as B, you remember this um, comparison operator, right? It's the same as if A is similar to B or if A is equal to B, but it's not an assignment operator. It's different from the A is equal to B, which is an assignment operator. This A is equal to B, which is what a comparison operator. So that makes it more like similar to or same as. So if A is what the same as B, then we can print what A is the what is the same as what B. Do you get it? So if A is the same as B, it will print A is the same as B. So I'm going to run it. Let me move this. Now, let me let me run it first of all, and then you see what will happen. I hope I've um, removed every other. Thing. Oh, I have A here. I'm commenting anything that is not part of this code, else it might confuse it. Okay. Sorry, let me do this quickly. Okay, now I'm gonna run this. Um, so nothing happens, right? Because A is not the same as B. So if A is the same as B, we, we wanted to print this. Now let me change this to 20. And then let's see. Okay, so here you can see A is the what is the same as B, right? So in this scenario, the, the program had to take a decision, right? It had to take a decision whether to print A is the same as B or not to do anything. Do you get it? And it, the first scenario, it chose not to do what anything because A was 10 and B was 20. The second scenario, it chose this path. A is the same as B. That's what we call decision making or branches. So you'll be creating programs that need to be able to take their own decisions based on the data that has been what provided, okay? Now, um, in the same way, now, first, first of all, let me talk about how to make sure that your syntax is correct. Now you can see that over here, there's a space here, right? I think I mentioned this already in the beginning when we started, I spoke about indentation, okay? Indentation is used by Python programming to, to show that something is running as a result of something else. So this space or this indentation is very critical in an if statement, right? Because the moment I bring this thing from here, this print statement is no longer based on this if statement, right? If I put the indentation there, this print statement is now based on what? This if, sorry, this if condition. So to write an if statement, you, you need the if keyword. Two, you need the condition which you are trying to satisfy, okay? There's a condition and you are checking whether the condition is what is true or false. Please do you understand. You check if the condition is true or false. If the condition is true, this statement will run or this line of code will run. If the condition is false, it will just move on to whatever is next. Please do you get it. So let's say I write, I write here, um, um, 
um, words uh, decision done right let me clear this bit sorry i meant to do print okay so if i do this so here it did if a it printed a is the same as b then it said what decision done right i'm trying to show you something so here that this if statement was true that the condition was what was true so it asks if a is the same as b print what a is the same as b so here the condition is true which is a is the same as b it's true so it's so it will print what a is the same as b when it's done it leaves this um if statement box okay it it leaves this block this if statement block and then it goes back to its normal um line of code that's following the, the normal line of code so it says decision done now let me take this back to 10 and then i'm going to run now you see that what it did was that it checked if the condition is true, it checked if A is what's the same as B, which is false. Immediately it, it, it's false, it skips this line of code. It skips what this line of code because this line and this line form one block. So once it checks the condition and the condition is false, it skips it and then it what? It goes to the next line of code, right? Okay, so take note that once the condition is true, it will do whatever the code says it should do. But if, if the condition is false, it will what? It will go to the line of code that is outside the block and just continue like that. Okay, nice. So let's continue. So this means that if I don't put the indentation there, right? There's gonna be what? An error, okay? because an if statement okay needs to go hand in hand with what a statement the condition needs a statement under it which it will do if the statement is correct or, or if the condition is true or what or false okay okay so that's just the basics of if statement now usually if you are taking a decision is this or that there's no there's no decision that you take that is what just this it's like i'll say do you have money if you have money i can give you the car but if you don't have money i can't give you the car so there are two what branches either you get the car or you don't get the car you can't say if you have money i'll give you the car but if but if you don't have money nothing like do you get me so there always has to be what an alternative um an alternate sorry an alternate path okay so let's do that in order to do create um the if statement alternate path the first thing you should know is else right and this is how to write else else print a is what not the same right so this is a this is a typical um, um two two-sided thing in a sense that it's either a is the same or a is not the same do you get me there's no in between decisions there's no sorry there's no in between decisions it's a very um should i call it binary or dig it out it's a very binary form of um, 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 decision making. So here I've written if A is the same as B, print what? This. Else, print this. The else here, what the else here is doing is that the else here is saying that if this is not true, do you get me? Or if the above here, if all this doesn't happen, do you get me? Else is saying that if this doesn't happen, do this do you get it so it is going to check is a the same as b 
If it is, it will print A the same as B. If it's not, it will print. Then the else will step in, right? When the else steps in, else will say, okay, the above code didn't work. Then it's this. A is not the same. Do you get me? A is not the same as B, sorry. Do you understand? So the else here is just the alternate for if the if statement doesn't work, right? Okay, so note that we can write anything in this. I can, instead, instead of saying, I can say, check your variables to know what is happening, right? That's if this is what I want to write. So here, A is not the same as B, right? So you're saying, check your variables to know what, what is happening, okay? Now, sometimes the decisions are in between. It's not binary. For example, let's say um, A is B and B is 20. Let's keep that. Then let's say we are saying if A, right, is greater than um, B, okay? Let's say we are saying if A is greater than what? B. So let me use 20 here. So A is 20 and B is 20. I think probably I should have been um, creating new examples so that people can still see. Okay. I think I'll do something. I'll just recreate the examples when I'm done. Because what happens is that sometimes people want to um, see each example as a separate example. Okay. So let me, let me, let me just um let me separate it so we, we started here the first thing we did was this let me cut it oh sorry i didn't mean to cut it but i've cut it already Okay, so the first time we just did the if statement, right? That was what we did. We didn't do anything else. Just A is equal to B. And then we played around with it. So I think this was it. So let me. Okay, let's move on. Then the second time I introduced um, the else, right? So we can move on from this also. Okay. Just so that if I need to refer to see the, the, where we've come from. Okay, now this time, what we what what we need to do is that we we want to give the the program more branches okay so i'm saying that here we have the variables a is 20 and b is, b is 20 and i'm saying that if a is greater than b i want you to say a is what is greater than what b right now we want to give it another branch Okay, another branch. And the way we do this is by writing something called else if. You get it? We write something called what? Else if. Else if is basically saying that if, right? But based on the previous statement. So I will help you understand this better. So watch. If, so it's saying that if this doesn't happen, check another condition. You get me? So now I come check another con condition. Now the way to write else if is elif, right? That's that's the that's currently how we write it. You can write else if, but what is widely accepted is what is elif. Okay, so we can do um, elif. That means else if a is equal to what b. Do you get it? Then here we can do, um, in fact, let me do this in another way. 
Then here we can do prints. Let me make it a little dramatic. Looks like A is what is the same as what B. Okay. Okay, now that is that. Um, now, what if A is not greater than B and A is not the same as B? Do you get me? So then we can create another branch with LF again. We can say LF. If what A is less than what B, sorry, I keep putting it in brackets because other programs, it is better if you put it in brackets. Okay. Some few things I haven't mentioned that you should take note of. After every condition, there needs to be what? A colon. Do you get it? Um, after every condition, there's a what? A column. So here's a condition. So we have the keyword if the condition the colon, and then your statement. You get it. Keyword, condition, colon, statement. So I'm doing the same thing here. Other programs, putting it in, or other languages, putting it in brackets is always better. That's why I keep, I keep mixing it a bit. Okay, so here I can say print. Okay, so looks like a is less than b right okay so looks like a is less than b right so that is that um now what if for some reason right all these conditions do not work do you get me let's say let's say instead of a number it is a letter do you get me it means that a cannot be greater than b a cannot be the same as b a cannot be less than b so let's say so usually we use the l statement to even look for anomalies things that are not normal right because you can't predict it do you get me this is where we use the this is where the else shines the most do you get it this is where the what the else shines the most. The else shines the most in in situations where you couldn't predict an error happening, or you couldn't predict that data that you are receiving. Okay, so if A is greater than B, it will say A is greater than B. If A is the same as B, it will say looks like A is, is the same as B. If A is less than B, we say okay. So it looks like what A is less than B. Let me make this capital for you. A is less than B. Else, else means that if all these things don't work, if none of the conditions are satisfied, then just print this. Do you get me? So this is like, usually we use this to just serve as a control. You know, sometimes maybe you enter a, some data. It can be a password, it can be an email. And then it tells you that um, your email should be should have a letter and this and that and that. It gives you some possible reasons why it is not working. You get me? It means that that is the else statement. It is, that's the last resort, okay? If your thing is not working, it's giving you the else statement of it where every condition has not been satisfied. Hence, it's, it's like, okay, what is going on? Do you get me? Okay, so this, if statements can be pretty fun because it allows you to sort sort of automate, right? Create things that behave in an automatic manner, right? So if I run this program, we all we, we will all see that it's going to say it looks like A is the same as what B, right? Okay. Now, if let's say the user put in, um, let me see, he put in a string, right? So. Hello world. Okay. Now here, here is a just a peculiar case. If the user puts in a string here, we have a little issue. The issue is that the if statement cannot 
we cannot the issue is it's not the if statement let me just say this the issue is the comparison operator do you get it the issue is what is the comparison operator you can't compare strings and integers do you get me mm -hmm. so that is that is basically the issue here so just so that we can get um um something related to what i'm trying to do okay here what it's doing is that it's comparing the the number of letters right so hello world hello it's saying that okay so it looks like um, Uncle Chan, this is a question okay feel free so if you put the integer like if you change integer into a string when you put it in quotation marks can would the if else it will still work yes it would so for example something like this let's say we do five and we do ten right it would recognize it as a string and not a, not a number. Do you get me? So it's not going to recognize it as what as a as a number. It's rather yeah. going to recognize it as a string. Steve, what if you are trying to compare the string "Hello World" and the other string "Ten"? Will it work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's say I ask you to enter your username, right? Let's say username. Let's ask you to enter your username. Um, let's say Saint. No, let me use a school that, right? And then, um, let's say I call this enter username, right? Right, so your username is Ancela, and let's say the person comes to enter 10, okay, being a string. Do you get me? It will do the comparison as if it's comparing strings. In that instance, 10 is not a number, so it will work. But if, let's say, you converted 10 to a number before you used it, because you can convert it to a number, do you get me? If you convert 10 to a number, to do it, I'd, I'd have to change it. So you let me just use A and B so that I don't have to change anything here. So if I compare this, this is gonna work. Do you get it? This is gonna work. What, what it's using is basically, um, it's using its own computation of a string, which string is what, bigger than the other, looking at the characters or the position of the characters on, on a normal, um, 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 like A, B, C, D, do you get me? Where the A lies and where the B lies and things like that, do you get me? So that is, that is what it's doing. It also uses the length of the string as well to see which one is greater than the other, right? Mm -hmm. So comparing strings this way, you don't compare strings in terms of greater than or less than. Do you get me? But you can compare strings in terms of equal to. So that's in terms of the same as. So if um, I'm doing the same as, so something like this. If I, if, I, if I do something like, if A is the same as B, you can print maybe password successful or username correct. Do you get me? If A is not the same as B, then it should say this. Do you get what I'm saying? So when it comes to comparing strings, you compare it in a different way to when it comes to comparing numbers. You can't compare strings or you won't compare strings in terms of greater than and less than. No, you compare strings in terms of, is this the same as this or is not the same, right? And you also compare strings in terms of maybe, does this have the same length as this or it doesn't have the same length, right? So if let's say you're supposed to create a password of, of not more than 10, 10 letters, then, you, then, then the computer can, can check, okay, the length of the string, is it greater than or less than 10? Because then you are dealing with numbers this time, right? So strings, comparing strings behaves differently 
from comparing integers, but the comparison is the same in terms of the operators that you use and, and, and the if statement, the syntax is the same. It's just the data, the data type is different. So you have to understand the data type that you're working with, but you can, you can do the comparison once the data type is the same. You can always compare two things if the data type is the same. Please, please Thank I answer. You. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, I was on. So I was saying that the else allows you to basically shut down everything. Okay. So, um, let's see. Let's see. We were using a lot of number examples. Let's look at. Let's let me change this back to the number so that it makes sense for anybody who sees it. 20, 20. Okay. Now let's just take one with strings this time so that you can, you, you can see. So I use the username, right? And I said Ansela. And I hope I'm spelling the Ansela right. Yeah, I am. And then um, let's say, um, enter username, right? Now, enter username means that I want somebody to enter the username. Do you understand? That's why I'm creating that. So I'm going to use, we've learned about how to take an input from a user, right? So I'm going to say, um, enter your username. Okay. Now, this, this, we can apply some of the concepts that we've learned. Um, in the past, so let's 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 see what we can do here. So enter your username, right? Then we can write an if statement saying that if um, username, right? That means if the stored username, that's the data that we have stored as username, is the same as enter username, right? If it's the same, then all we need to do, all, all we want to do is to print um, hello, right? Hello, um, hello username. So here we can, we can use a few approaches. We can use the format. Now, the reason why I'm doing it this way, bear in mind, is because I want you to think about programming as using all that you have learned so far, you get me? So I am, I am making it more, I'm making it more of a program. I could have just made this simple for you, but you understand the if statement now, right? You understand how to use if, how to use elif, and how to use else, okay? So right now, I'm just trying to make this as practical as possible for you, okay? Okay, so now you remember how to format a string using the f and the, and the quotation. So I'm going to use write a statement that says something like, um, hello, okay? Username, right? Hello, username. Um, welcome to your new account, or something like that. No, no. Welcome back. Let's do welcome back because the person already has a username, so means he or she is coming back. Welcome back to your account. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so this is the scenario. This means that if the person enters a username and that username is the same as the username that we have stored, right? It would print hello username, which is Ancilla. I could have just written Ancilla, but I'm trying to make sure that you remember the things you have learned. That's why I am using things we have learned already. So hello Ancilla, welcome back to your what? To your account. Now we need to put something like, so in this case, this thing is, this is, this is pretty binary, okay? Binary means it's just, it has only two options. It is either the username is correct or the username is not correct. Do you get me? So, I mean, there are other things in between, but when it comes to username, either, it's either username is correct or username is not correct. There, there, there is no point of the program fishing out where on your username is wrong and saying that your username is missing an N or this. Do you get what I'm saying? 
because then you are trying to keep the account as secure as possible. So there's no point giving suggestions to. So this kind of program will only require two branches. Do you get me? An if statement and an else statement. It doesn't require multiple branches. So we can end it here and say else print what? Um, wrong what? Username. Wrong username. Try again or contact your account manager. I'm just writing something. This is nothing. Anyway, so in this scenario, what it means is that, okay, if I enter, sorry, I should have commented this turns out. Uh oh, what am I doing? Okay, let's go on. Okay, let's do this again. So in this scenario, enter your username, right? So if I enter Ancilla, right? It's going to compare this string to the string that I have entered, right? So let me press enter. It's the same. So if you say, hello, Ancilla, welcome back to your, to your account, okay? Okay, now, that if you you know program programming is not as <laughs> simple as this because the reason why programming is not as simple as this is because users are not as simple as this someone might have the right username but enter it a little wrongly so for example if i should enter if i should enter ancilla right but i don't use capital a look at what's going to happen you get me? It's it. Let me let me run it again. This provision should have given me an else. Okay, Ancilla. Okay, so it says wrong username. Try again or contact your account manager. Do you see there? I have the right username, right? But the A is what is wrong, right? So it compares the strings and sees that ah, this A is different from that A. So boom, right? Okay, let me just throw this question to you. You might not know, but let me see how you, you think. What do you think I can put in my program to make sure that even if the person puts a, 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 uses a small a, it will still work? Any ideas? I don't expect you to get it right. I just want you to just think a bit. Because at the end of the day, programming is all about what solving a problem. Okay, you you have a problem when someone enters the username. Um, sometimes they enter a small a instead of a big a. How do we make sure that even if they enter a small a, their account will still recognize them? Any ideas on how we can do this? What do you think we can do? So that um, even if the person enters, not a wrong username, but even if the person enters like a, a, a capital instead of a small letter, do you get me? Or a small letter instead of a capital letter, the person will still be allowed to log into the account. That's your face. Come again. That replace. The replace. Okay. 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 Yeah. So I like the way you are thinking. So you are thinking about strings, right? You are you are thinking about okay, how do we manipulate the string so that we get the same result all the time? And and that is good. Our lady is saying that convert the user input into upper, which is also very, very good. So Honestly, both of them will work. Do you get me? Both of them will work, will work. But you need to use the program that is all the, the method that's the most efficient, right? You need to look at, okay, which, which makes the work easier, which makes it faster, which will, which will reduce the number of errors that I could likely get, right? Okay. So um, one of the ways we could do it, or one of the ways that comes into my mind right now is, we could put we could make sure that the username 
and the enter username, right? We could make sure that they are they they all have the same um um they are either both small letters or they are both capital letters, right? So you know, if we do dot upper, it converts everything to capital letters. If we do dot lower, it, it converts everything to what to lowercase letters, right? So we could just make sure that in the if statements, they are both what lowercase letters. So everything will always be converted to a lowercase letter before it is compared. This way, we don't we won't have any issue with someone like using small letters and big letters because everything will be converted to what small letters or everything to be converted to what to big letters you get me that will be there i think that will be the fastest way so i could do something like username dot what dot lower right here then i'll do the same thing here enter username dot what dot lower you get it so it will make sure that this is a dot lower and this is also what a dot lower in that case, no matter how the person, whether the person uses big, small, it will always bring everything to what to dot lower. So now, if I should run, if I should run this and I say answer, and I enter, it will still give me that hello answer. Welcome back to your account. And you see, it didn't affect the answer itself because I didn't change answer right i only changed it when i'm computing the condition i'm saying in the condition check for the username dot lower and the what and the enter username dot lower check if they are the same so it doesn't affect any other part of the program okay okay hope we are clear any questions before i move on any questions five four three two one okay so we are fine um so i think we've done uh, no, 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 no. okay now we used logic operators right if my memory serves me right we used um things like and or right not and things like like that you can apply them in this scenario also or in certain scenarios also so for example let's um let's use let's do username and password this time around right username and password You don't have a password. So let me take this off so that anyone who looks at it can see that we were here. We we're here. So, okay. Now let's get a username, right? The username is what? Is Ansela as usual. Because they are, they are my most active people. Well, our lady too is pretty active. So we have Ansela. Hey, see you. I'm saying we have Ansela. So we have the username, and then we have password, right? Let's say Ansela's password is um, let's say I don't know what it is. Let's say two, three, four, brothers. Oh, brother, two, three, four, brother. Let's say this is your password, okay, Ansela. And um, here, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to use some, you know, um, logic, right? We are trying to just do some end or and things like, like that. So I'm going to say if username, right? Now we've done the whole upper lower thing, right? So let's keep that for the username. So if username dot lower. Um, is equal to enter. So I've not created enter username, but I'll but I'll create it. So enter the username. Sorry, that's lower. Right. Okay. Remember to bring your column. So if these are the same, right? 
Now, we need to check a few things. Now, I'm going to put a bracket around this because is it just makes it much safer. Okay. Now, now I'm going to say and, right? And password. Now, with password, you know, small letters and big characters make a difference. So I won't use any dot. And password is equal to what? Password. Hey, no, enter password. So go to enter password. Right? Okay. Let me bracket this also. Now, this time, what we are saying is that in order to enter your account, okay, you do not just need your username, but you need your username and your password. You understand? So I'm saying that if the person enters the username, sorry, if the person enters the username and is right, and the person enters the password and is right, you remember end, right? The end operator. You remember well, how we used it, so I don't need to go back to it. If the person uses that, you get me? True, true is true. So if this condition is true and this condition is true, is what? It's true. Okay. Um, can you give me a second? Eh? Just a second. There's someone at, at, at the door. I need to. A second. Okay, I'm back. Really sorry about that. I had to attend to someone quickly. Whew. Okay, so where were we? So I was saying that in this scenario, you are using the um, operator inch. And it brings me back to the point when I said that all this while we have just been learning what syntax, okay? We have just been learning the, 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 the words. We have not been really constructing things with it. So it's, it's now that we are now constructing code. So we are picking from the things that we've learned, okay? Okay, so we have this. So it means that in order for this condition, this entire condition to be satisfied, this needs to be true. And this also needs to be what? True, right? Okay, so then I'll say print, um welcome let me this one let me use the other approach so welcome right then i can put username right you know how this works already so so welcome username right um yeah 
that is that. Now, on the other hand, if, right, that's why I'm using else if, okay. If, now someone might be asking, what if we do if, 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 what happens? Do you hear me? Instead of us using else if, what if we do if? Um, I can take you through an example so, so that you understand, but you don't use if, 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 if you want everything to be based on one condition. You get me? You use if, 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 if there are different conditions for different things. If this is doing that, do this. If one condition doesn't affect the other, then you can use if, 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 and not else if. You are using else if because the first condition if affects the what else if. So if the, if the first line of code runs, the else if should not run. You get me? Let me just um, go back a bit. So, so for example, this. If this code runs, right, it will ignore all this code. Do you get it? If this code runs, it will ignore what? The rest of the code. Do you, do you get it? But if you use if, if means that one code is not dependent on the other. That, that means that this code can run, this code too can run, this code too can run. That's if you are using if, if, if. Please get it. If, if, if just means that you are, you are, you are comparing different things. The one comparison is not related to the other comparison. It is not a decision tree. It's not the same tree branching out. It's different trees with no branches. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hope, hope that made sense. I don't even know. <laughs> now, what if you wanted to check, let me copy this just to make my way through this. What if this time you wanted to check um, for maybe the person entered the username, but then password is wrong, or username is correct, but then password, do, do, do you get me? So here you have to use what, or, right? Okay, so, sorry. Please note that if, if you don't bring the column, it doesn't create the indentation for you. This is what happens, well, watch. No column, I press enter, it just goes down. If I bring the column, I press enter, it creates an in indentation for me. You can create an indentation yourself, but the column is needed. Okay, so here I can say, um, wrong what, username or what, password. Do you understand? Because one of them is wrong, right? Sorry. Then um, I can do else. So remember that for all to work, right? For it to say wrong username or password, either the username is correct and the password is wrong or the password is correct and the username is what is wrong. So one of them has to um, satisfy. Else, else just means that if the above does not work, right? If, if, if none of them is satisfied, then you can say, um, I'm looking for something to say, I don't know. Um, maybe wrong details. Nah, let me just use this. Um, forgot. Account details. Click here to recover the account. Yeah, so this is fine. Nothing long. Okay. So, um, I don't know whether I, I need to test. I've done something wrong. Oh yeah. Okay. Let me use this as an as an opportunity to see those of you who understood the debugging I spoke about the last time, how to catch an error, right? How to catch an error. Who can tell me what's the problem with my code? There's an error. Who can tell me what's the problem with my code? Look at the error 
and tell me based on the error that I'm being given, what is the problem with my code? Yeah, it doesn't come, you didn't define the enter username. Okay, nicely said. But what does that mean? What does that mean? I and mean, there's no like to the, um, to the enter username. Come again? You didn't like make um, you should not assign the value to the enter username. Yes, I didn't create the variable enter username. That's basically it. It's very, very, very good. Yeah. So I didn't create the variable enter username in the first place. So I didn't do that, not just for the enter username, but for enter username and enter password. But usually an error will tell you the first error it sees. Do you get me? Then if you correct that, it will tell you the next error. So um, it means that I have to create what enter what username. Ah, uh, what school is that? The person who, who responded. Angela. Oh, my favorite school. Um, enter username. Okay. So enter username will be an input, right? So we need to um, do due diligence and say um, enter your username. And uh oh, what did I just do? And I didn't do the same for the password. So enter password. Is Ansela a mixed school or, or a girl's school? I'm just curious. A mixed school. Mixed school, okay. And where are you guys located, if I may ask? At Hachu. Hachu, okay. Okay. Maybe one that comes to see you guys. Okay. We have a question. Who has a question? Okay, and we have a question, please. Okay. Please so, ask. what if the problem is with your password and maybe your username is correct? What coding structure will you use to maybe tell the user that maybe your username is correct, but your password is wrong? Okay, so um, there's a there are, there's there are, there's a very there's probably a very simple way to do that. If you want to just tell the person that your username is correct but your password is wrong, you get me. So you could just you could just write the if statement for just the username. You get me. The reason why I'm even creating this is just so that you guys have an example with the end in it. Do you get it? And with the or in it. Most of my examples might not be very practical. Do you get me? But they are just scenario based, just to help you use certain syntax in the context of what we are doing. Do you, do you get me? But if you want to know if the username is right, all you have to do is to check if the username is right. Right? If username is this, print the username is correct. If password is this, print your password. Do you get what I'm saying? There's really no, it's not, it's not fancy. It's straightforward. You get me? So honestly, I didn't even, one might not necessarily, one can just check if the username is right and just say your username is wrong. And one can just check if the password is right and just say the password is right or wrong. Do you get me? Uh -huh. One can just check if the username is correct and say wrong username or password. Do you get me? Because once the username is wrong, then it means that you can still say wrong username or password because the username is still in that context. Please, you get me? So you okay, can, act, yeah, you can actually maneuver it in, in, in different ways. This is not, um, um, as much as it's, a, this is not as practical as I'm making it look. I am just trying to make it as practical as possible, right? Uh -huh. So that's, the 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 code um or the topic I'm treating makes sense to you basically yeah but in a real world scenario you would have to be more efficient in different ways but based on the context based on where we are and what we are doing that's as practical as I can make it for you okay All right okay um so as a scenario like this all I have to do is print username 
I'm tired of typing anyway. I'm, I mean, I'm tired of typing things into the input. Enter your username. Okay, so uh -huh. I think this is the first time we are doing two inputs, right? But it, it works just like that. It will first ask you the first input. When it's done, it will ask you the second input, right? So enter your username. Um, username is what? Ancilla, right? So Ancilla. Password is two, three, four, brother, right? So welcome, answer, right? So that's it. If I got it wrong, you would see that it won't. So let's say I type Ancilla, password is me. Wrong username or password, right? So that is that. In this scenario, that is what that achieves, right? Okay, brilliant. So, um, any other question before I move on to what else we can do? Okay, then let's go on. Um, now, apart from this whole end and logic, using logic operators, you can also do something called nesting. Okay, nesting. Now, nesting is is one one very common example of nesting is when you are calculating when you are trying to determine write a program for a leap year. Okay, a leap year has a certain number of like parameters it needs to meet or a certain number of um, conditions it needs to meet, right, for something to be a leap year. So LPA is a very common thing for us to use, but I'll not use that. I'll use something simpler, but just you can just check it out, right? How to write an if statement for a leap year. You see that it uses nesting to achieve that. I'm going to use just like not normal numbers so that we don't have to worry ourselves with the logic behind a leap year. Let me comment this out first. Okay, now um, let's just create one variable called A. And let's say A is um, 20, right? Usually when you want to, the reason why you nest a loop, you will create a nested loop is if the thing is meeting multiple conditions, right? And for each height of condition it meets, you want it to be recognized or you want something else to happen. For example, let's say we are going to watch a movie. I want to give you a practical example. Let's say we're going to watch a movie, okay, as a family, okay? In a family, you have like people from five years all the way to like 90 or 80, right? And um, there are age appropriate movies. And hey, see, <laughs> what am I saying? There are certain movies that are appropriate for certain ages and certain movies that are not, right? We all know that. Now, I can write an if statement, okay? That says that um, if, 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 if the family member, okay, is less than, let's say, 10 years, the person should watch this, right? Let's say the person should watch um, Frozen. I'm sure we all know Frozen. So, okay, if the family member is less than 10 years, you should watch Frozen. Um, but maybe grandpa too wants to watch Frozen, but grandpa is not 10 years. Do you get me? Grandpa is, 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 is not less than 10 years. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So in that context, um, what, like, what do we do? So that's where nested loops becomes very important. Because of the example I've given, so let me rather use that example. I think that it will be it will be much visual for you to understand. So, um, let's see. Okay, how do I do this? Um, I'm still doing the same thing, but I'm just using, let's say grandpa is 70 years, right? Mm -hmm. Now we are going to watch Moana or we are going to watch 
frozen, whatever it is. Now, I'm going to say that if it doesn't make sense to say grandpa's speech <laughs> and say it's an if statement, it just, it just doesn't add up. So let me say each, right? <laughs> it just doesn't add up. So, so let's say if, right? Um, if H, okay, if H is, um, is greater than, let's start with five, right? Let, let's start with five. Prince, um, you can watch. You can watch Frozen, right? Okay. So if the person is older than five years, you can watch Frozen. This means that anyone from five years can watch Frozen from a little kid who is 10 years to grandpa who is 17. Okay. Now, that's how you nest the loop. When you're nesting a loop, nesting a loop just means that you are putting a loop. Hey, sorry, not a loop. We are nesting an if statement. Nesting an if statement just means that you are putting an if statement in an if statement. So that the second if statement will run only if the person has already passed the first if statement test. You get me? So let's say you have a child who is two years, right? That child who is two years will not, this condition will not be true for that child. So the next if statement that I'm coming to write, the child will not even be a part of it. So all right, if age is now greater than let's say um let me do 15 right 15 what what can people watch at 15 um friends what okay you can watch you can watch what hawk anna please give me some movie names sir eh, because then we can say if age is, let's say, greater than 18, right? Prince. You can watch. Please, what are some of the movies that 18 years people can watch? Um, I think the most popular movie now is Squid Game. You can watch Squid Game because Squid Squid Game is pretty bloody. Then I can say if greater than maybe twenty five. I can say you can watch maybe um, Housewives or something or Rich Rich Housewives. I don't know what that is anyway. Please, I'm just making up movies here. Eh? Okay, so so now now we are trying to create a scenario that's like like age appropriate and things like like that. Okay, so what this is going to do is that then so in this case, if if you want to print an else, you can put put an else here and just say um. Maybe for some reasons something went wrong, okay, and escaped the loop. You can you can just put an else and you say um, rerun the program and enter your name, a, hey, and enter your age. This is really not like true for what I'm saying. I'm just writing something. But this this really. Uh, This really, okay, 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 no. This scenario will only exist, this scenario can only exist if the person is not greater than five, right? So if you go to bed, no movie for you, right? So in this scenario, it means that the person is, it's not even five years, right? In this scenario, it means that the person is not even five years. So that's why it's here, yeah, makes sense. Okay, so let's see. Grandpa is 70, right? So 
what is going to happen? You see? So, Grandpa, you can watch Frozen, you can watch Hulk, you can watch Squid Game, and oh, God, what the hell is You can watch what? Rich. <laughs> okay, you can watch Rich Housewives. So, th that is basically it. In this case, Grandpa satisfies all the conditions. But is the reason why he gets everything because he's greater than five, he's greater than 15, he's greater than 18, and he's greater than 25. You get me? So he will get all the... Now, if, let's say, the person was just 10 years, he says you can watch Frozen. And it's only Frozen a person can watch. Do you understand? Because the person meets this requirement but when it comes to this condition the person gets a false because he gets a false okay it skips the loop and it doesn't print the else note that it doesn't what print the else the else will happen if the first condition is not satisfied if none of these conditions are what satisfied but one condition was satisfied this was satisfied sorry I meant to say, let me take that again. I made a mistake with what I said. The else will run if none of these conditions are satisfied. Okay? The else will run if what? The above condition, as I said, the elf is like um, a damage control thing. Okay? If none of this is satisfied, then you should go to bed. No movie for you. Okay? But once the person is greater than five, one of these conditions or all or some this, the, the person will be able to work, satisfy. Okay. So that's how um, nesting loops works. And it's very useful. It's very, very, extremely, very useful. Okay. Okay. Now, one last thing. Sometimes you are writing a program, okay? And you're writing an if statement but you don't know what to write yet you know the condition you want to satisfy but you don't know what should happen if that condition is satisfied okay so but you want to keep writing the rest of your programs and still be testing the program forgive me there's something called pass pass works for many block code okay or indented code so if for example, if I write, if A is greater than B, right? But I don't know what to write there. Do you get me? I don't know what to what, write there. Do I have A, B somewhere here before this thing gives me an error? Please, if you have any question on the nested loops, please, you can ask it. Hey, sorry, I keep calling it nested loops. I'm sorry. If you have any question on the nested if statements, you can ask nested if else you can ask or nested if you can ask okay so if let me sorry a is equal to zero b is equal to zero okay now so this is a pass right pass allows you to um omit a statement so this thing will not do anything, but it will also not give you an error. That is, that's what it's all about, okay? It will not do what, anything, but it will also not what, give you an error, okay? So you, it's not just used for if statements, but for a lot of code that looks like this, any code that looks like this, okay? Where you have the condition or you have the function or you have something here, but you don't know what to put inside here yet, but you want to keep writing other code and you will come back to it. You can use what? your pass to so just leave it open for now, but it will not give you what an error. Okay, so just note that. Okay, please, any question? Any question so far? Five, four, three, two, one, boom. Okay, so let's continue. Now we're gonna treat loops. Okay, loops, loops is a very interesting thing. And when, once we start using loops, we are going to go back to lists, strings again, and we'll apply our loops there 
also. Okay. Hi. Right. So let me comment this out. Okay. We're going to start with wow loops. Hello? Has my microphone been off all this while? No. Hello? Hello? Yeah, please, what was the last thing that you guys heard? You said we are about to discuss loops. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so it looks like my network went off and came back again. So I was wondering what exactly was happening but wait oh, has my microphone been been off all this while or you guys could hear me could hear you okay okay awesome thank you okay so let's talk about loops um there are two main loop commands one is the while loop and the for loop okay we're going to start with the while loop okay now um the way a while loop works is a while loop is sort of supposed to be a is a loop or it's a continuous loop okay that will allow your program to keep running until the initial condition changes okay so it will allow your program to keep running, right? Until the what? Initial condition changes. Does someone have a question? Because I think I'm seeing a hand. Or, or is it an old hand? Our lady, please have a question. Or it's an old hand. Okay, so... I guess it's an old hand. It's an old hand. It's a old. Hey, I said more brothel. It's an old hand. Yeah, I'm right. It sounded wrong, but yes, it's an old. <laughs> it's an old hand. Okay. So as I'm saying, a while loop is used in a way that it keeps running. The code will keep running unless a certain condition is no longer true okay unless what a certain condition is what no longer true in order to create a while loop a few things that you need is one you need the condition okay you need the condition um let me let me give you a, an example of a while loop a very common example of a while loop while loops are really used in creating games okay for example you know, a game has a background. There's always like a, a play area, the place where the game is gaming. And there's always like, there's a picture at, at the back, whether it's a forest, whether it's, it's, it's the deserts, but there's a place where the player is, is like moving. So what the, the very common program that you see is that while, um, while let's say the score is this, or while, while the timer is this, do you get me? the the background should keep appearing again okay? because you know the way games are created is basically a very basic idea is the images are drawn you get me so if you have let's say a forest the forest is being drawn over and over and, and over again right like in milliseconds you get me every millisecond the forest is being drawn that's what keeps the picture on the screen you get me so the way the picture changes is every time the player moves, a new image is drawn. Every time the player does something, a new image is, is drawn. You get me? So games work with images. That's if you're working with 2D games. Okay? Images are being drawn. So you want the program to keep drawing the image all the time. Right? So you use a while loop. So it will continue drawing the image, continue drawing the image, continue drawing it until the condition for which it was drawing the image 
no longer exists. Okay, then that way it will stop drawing the image. Okay, so um, let's just do some basic ex examples. So the first thing is we need a con we need a condition. So to create a condition, let's use a. Let's say a is what is zero. Okay, we are going to say while a let's say is less than ten. Okay, while a is less than ten. Sorry, while a is less than 10, we want to print, um, what do we want to print? Let's say we want to print answer line. <laughs> okay, now let's look at this. Watch what is going to happen. Uh, what did I do wrong? Hey, sorry. Uh, nah. I'm right. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Hmm, I said more. Okay, now it should work. Okay, sorry. So yeah, that's it. Let me stop the loop. Okay. Now, okay, so the reason why it wasn't working is because there was an indentation here. Do you see? Not just here, but here also. You get me? That's why I mentioned earlier that indentations in, in Python or the spaces you leave before your code is very, very what important. It's sensitive. Python is very sensitive to indentations. Okay, let me not create another one by mistake. Oh, my back. Okay, now, um, so watch this. While A is less than 10, print what? Ancilla. You saw what happened, right? When I print it, it just keeps printing Ancilla. Like all this is Ancilla and to continue printing. This is called a forever loop, right? If you've written some, some program, some if you use some visual programming tools, you might have heard of forever loop, probably in Scratch or somewhere else. A forever loop. A, a forever loop means that the thing will run forever. And the only way I stop it is when I manually go and what? Stop my backend here. Okay, so note that you can stop your back end code over here. Now, sorry, as I said, a, the way a while loop works is that a code will keep running unless a condition, the condition is no longer what true or unless the condition can no longer be satisfied. So we have written the condition, A is less than 10. And we all know A is less than 10 because A is zero, right? While A is less than 10, if you print Ancilla, so it will keep printing what? Ancilla, right? Now, if we want to create a scenario whereby the condition of A is less than 10 can change, then we need to change A is less than 10 or, or we need to change the, the, the value of A. And the easiest way to do that is to do a plus equal to what? One. I hope you remember this, right? When we did um, operators and we changed this, where we used assignment and um, a combination of the assign, I forgot the name. Oh God. Okay, let me see. Uh, what's the name of the operators? Arithmetic operators. <laughs> I said more. Where, where we used a combination of, but note this, please note this. Nobody will ask you the name of these things. Do you get me? So that's why many a times, I mean, programmers forget the names of a couple of things that they use, okay? Because when it comes to the theory, really nobody's going to ask you. Everything programming is practical. There is, there is no question, you get me? You only require the theory when you are teaching it. You get me? Uh -huh. But nobody will ask you, write three arithmetic operators. That is the most stupid question I've ever had. Well, what are the assignment operators? Who cares? 
Do you get me? The question is whether you can use them. Do you, do you understand? Okay. Okay, so let's let's go on. So do you remember we did combining the arithmetic and the what assignment operators, right? Note that me, I need to know these things because I'm teaching you. Okay. But when your quiz, I'm not going to ask you, or nobody's going to ask you to to to, to like name the assignment operators. You just know to you just need to know them and use them. Okay. Hi. Right. Just letting you you know so that you won't be really worried about memorizing arithmetic operators, assignment operators, comparison operators, because even I don't remember them, right? I only refer to, to them when I forget and then I need to say it or I need to mention it somewhere. Okay, so you remember we did a combination of assignments and arithmetic operators, right? Together. And that gave us this. Right? So instead of saying A is equal to A plus one, we, we could do A plus equal to one, right? So A plus equal to one. That was basically it. Now, what, and I explained what it is. It serves as an increment. It serves as a way to increase whatever value is in, what, is in the variable A, okay? So now what this means is that, what this means is that, a is equal to zero, that's how it starts. The first, it's a loop, okay? So a loop means that it iterates or it iterates. It goes over and over and over and over again. The code keeps running, right? So in the first instance, it will print ancillar. In the second instance, when it comes to print ancillar, A will no longer be zero, it will be what, one. Then it will print again. Then A will now be two, it will print again. A will be three, it will print again. A will be four. This will happen until A is what? It's 10. Immediately A is 10, this while loop, this while, this condition will no longer be true. So it will break out of the loop, okay? So I can hear, here I can write, just so that we, we can know what is happening, okay? Um, loop, I can, let me just say loop ended, okay? So that when it breaks out, we can see, okay? So I'm going to run this, so you see, it printed ancillar, 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 ancillar. Then it printed what loop ended. Okay. Note that this is this starts. Mm, this starts. This starts counting from from zero because we set a to zero, right? It it didn't just start. Mm, just start counting from zero. So if I put five here, it means it, it will start counting from five. So you see, it has reduced the number of ancillar that we get. So this is useful when you want to repeat something a number of times, okay? Or when you want to, you want something to keep happening until a certain condition changes and then it should break out of that loop, okay? Okay, cool. So, um, any question so far, we'll be ending soon. I just want you to understand why I'll loop and um, how it works. Any question so far? Okay, brilliant. So let's take note. The while loop, one, it requires a condition. The condition will come with a variable. Hence, you have to what, create the variable. And then the statement. Then the increment. It requires what? The increment as well. Without the increment, what are you creating? You're creating a forever loop. Okay, without the increment, you're creating what? A forever loop, okay? If you want to see this in real action, we can, instead of printing the this, we can actually print the A, right? This way you get to see what is happening to the A. So let me print the A and you get to see five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the 10th one is what? Bam, it is loop ended. Okay. All right. Let me let me just copy this so that we, we have two examples there for people who I think when I'm done, I'll send this entire line of code to you, like everything to you guys. I didn't start documenting from the first day, so sorry about that. Uh am I still recording? I, I hope so. I think I am. I think I'm still recording. 
Okay, so um, the first example we used A0 loop less than 10. We did, um, so that's one. right, and we did loop under. No, the first example was a, was a forever example. So let me do that. Um, okay. Not that one. So the second example that was okay. So this this was the stages in which we learned it to get to this place. Now. I'm sure you guys are okay now. Okay now. Okay. Any question? We are coming. We are we are ending for the day. 